What's up guys, I'm Big Coming, and today we're gonna to be having a nice little discussion about the meta of competitive war right now, and sort of what's happening with Town Hall 9, 10, and 11. The best of my ability, as you know, I'm a Town Hall 9 and 10 player, so the most, um, I guess, first-hand knowledge is gonna come from those two Town Halls, so I apologize if later in the video, when we reach Town Hall 11, you disagree or flat out think I'm wrong with some of the statements th that I make. If that's the case, feel free to comment down below in the comment section but let's get right into a couple announcements. First and foremost, the They Coming to Clash Discord server is being launched today. Right now, you're able to log into Discord and join my server, lowercase z, uppercase t, uppercase x, little j, little a, big v, little u, okay? It is a case sensitive code, meaning if you do not include the lower and uppercase letters, it will not come out right. You will not be able to join the server. So. I hope that you're able to figure that out and join up and join our little community. There's a lot of exciting little things to do on there. Also, like I said before, if you're interested in participating in any of the community events that I'll be holding, such as wars or tournaments, you need to be on that server to fill out the signup sheet. So anyways, let's move on to the second big announcement of this video, two big ones right here. And that is Champions War League has acquired some new logos. And I think these are really cool. They're really pretty. The one in the middle is sort of like the blanket logo for the whole entire Champions War League. And the different ones that you see there obviously are sectioned out for Invite, Premier, Rising, and Light. And um, obviously I uh, will be covering Rising League for Boston Tea Parties, um, sort of war recaps, and also doing some streaming, uh, sharing some stream time with Klaus. Uh, but the biggest part of this, guys, I found out last night, I got messaged by the CWL media admin about joining their official um, streaming and YouTubing crew for the Rising League. So it'll be myself, Jack Adunga, and Klaus Gaming covering the Rising League on an official level. We are in cahoots, we are doing business together. So this is a really cool opportunity for me, one that I'm really looking forward to. Obviously, I know both Jack and Klaus very well, having collaborated with both of them over the past few months, actually, and I've known Klaus for almost a year. So um, this is a really great time for me, and um, I'm really looking forward to it. I think we're gonna put out some really great content, showcasing 40 different clans in the Rising League. I can't wait. So, moving on. Um, let's get right into the meat and potatoes of what this video is supposed to be about. And that is what's happening with Town Hall 9, 10, and 11. CWL season two ended, and you know, basically some other leagues um, sort of picked up with the beginning of their seasons, namely NDL. We'll talk a little bit about that a little bit later, but um, the troop rise and, and decline. What troops are really strong right now for Town Hall 9? What troops are really strong at Town Hall 10, Town Hall 11? And uh, let's go ahead and go right into Town Hall 9. Now, you probably have an idea of the troop that's strongest right now, and you'd be right, the witch is definitely the strongest troop right now for Town Hall 9. We're seeing which is used in the vast majority of wars and the vast majority of war attacks at Town Hall 9 and to great success. At one point, the witch, the witch slap success rate was somewhere around 70%. So that's quite high for a troop that previously was like unplayed for a very long time. So um, my opinions on that, we'll talk about a little bit later, but followed up quickly by a front from the witches would be the hog rider. The hog rider, putting the witch aside, right? The hog rider would definitely be the king of Town Hall 9. Um, your, you, hogs are extremely effective for many different base ar ar archetypes, many different attack styles, um, using you know different front ends. And uh, yeah, it's really, the, the hog rider has been a decent troop for Town Hall 9, but it's extremely powerful right now. And I'd say the hog rider is excellent. Now, after the hog rider would be the balloon. Now, why is the loon after the hog? Well, this summer it received sort of a silent sort of uh, nerf that was noticed by some of the high-end war war people that loons have this stutter now where if they're going after a target, they now pause and stop to go after a new target if, say, a Tesla pops or their target is, is destroyed. Previously, there was no stutter. The balloon would immediately uh, retarget and head towards its new target. Now, it, there's a noticeable pause and this definitely does affect sort of the canter, the progression, the momentum that Alalo is really is most effective with. When you get up, you know, several hay spells going down, a rage spell just to move everything smoothly in this nice, you know, floaty fashion over a base. And the loons, unfortunately, because of that little, you know, silent nerf, 
now fall below Hog Riders. After Loons, Dragons would definitely have to have to, have to come. And, but the thing is, Dragons are very niche, um, a, a niche troop. The base has to be organized in a certain way to effectively use Dragons. And uh, so that's why Dragons fall so low on, on, the, on the list. Now things also like Pekka Smash could be viable, but because of you know moving the air defenses toward the exterior of the base and a lot of different base designs that we're seeing currently, or at least at the end of season two in the beginning or of the uh, NDL season, um, having the air defenses so far out also prevents things like Pekka Smash from being super effective because if the healers are shot down before the Pekka kill squad gets inside the base with the bowlers, the healer Pekka effect is really ruined. So, you know, really, Witches fall at the very top top of this list, hands down, followed by Hog Riders, Loons, and Dragons. Now let's move on to Town Hall 10. So Town Hall 10, let's, go, let's talk about first ground versus air. Right now, ground is king for Town Hall 10. Obviously, Lalo is still viable, but with the stutter, it's been noticeably more difficult to triple with Lalo, at least from what I've seen. And I've seen, we've been seeing a lot, especially in No Dip League, Bowlers and Witches. Bowlers and Witches, versus Town Hall 10 has definitely picked up um, most of the 10v10 triples that I have seen. Now, followed up closely from Bowlers and Witches would be the would be the Miners. Miners are doing extremely well with their new level three that was just added to um, the Town Hall 10 arsenal because not only do they get level three, but level three is now buffed with hit points, extra hit points than it used to have. So if you take a lot of Miners and more CC Miners, uh, I actually recently saw a 10v10 three star that involved over 50 miners, and that was absolutely insane. Basically, the guy had all miners, a baby dragon, and a CC full of miners. So it was literally all miners, and it actually worked, crushed a near max town hall 10. So um, after miners would be hogs. Now hogs are strong, but they're a little bit more difficult from what I've gathered to three star with, but still a strong option. Hog Riders level six receiving a hit point buff has been pretty large. And uh, you know, that's just made the Hog Rider attacks onto Infernos to get across giant bombs, a lot more viable um, in this meta. Now, second, I definitely would say we are seeing less air at Town Hall 10 right now. Uh, in No Dip League, in the No Dip League wars that I've been witnessing, seen far fewer Lalos than, than, than we were before, uh, seeing far few dragon attacks than we were before. Uh, so, yeah, I'd say ground guys is really, ground is dominating TH9 and TH10 right now. There's a lot less air than, 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 than there was, say, beginning of season two CCWL. Air was really dominant back then. So uh, let's go ahead and move down to Town Hall 11. Now this is the Town Hall that I'm probably gonna get the most flack for, but um, we're, we're, we're gonna talk about it as briefly as possible and move on, because I'm sure you get, you'll have a lot to say to me in the comments section. Um, the 11 v 11 sex, su success rate for uh, three starring, it totally blows 10v10 out of out of the water, uh, and this is kind of surprising. You know, you would think that at a higher level of the game than Town Hall 10, tripling would be more difficult, but actually it's not, and that's probably due to the fact that you can get an extra elixir spell from your CC. You can also get uh, you also get the Grand Warden, and uh, that is sort of like a global freeze slash immunity, like it's a very large freeze spell, somewhat, because it um, it negates, you know, damage onto a large area of your troops as opposed to just freezing down one or two defenses. So it's, you know, you have to think about what you have in your offensive art arsenal and those two things, the extra elixir spell and the Grand Warden certainly do uh, contribute to the success of 11v11 uh, in, a, in a big way. So um, now, in terms of the troop compositions, both ground and air are, are working well, and that is because the Warden is just that darn good. The Warden has definitely helps to prop up both ground and air armies, and you're going to see, you know, really effective three-star attacks from both, you know, these Bowler Witch, Miner compositions to your Loons or your, or your Dragons. Now, uh, the Dragons and the Hog Riders for TH 11 v 11 are definitely going to be lower uh, hit hit you're gonna have a lower hit rate using dragons and and hog riders uh, 11 v 11 then you will the what is what lies above uh, but that's just what I've witnessed in the clans that I've been covering in the no dip league wars that I've been seeing for the past several weeks so if some of you disagree if, if if you think I'm totally wrong with that please comment down below and tell me because I would love to learn more 
I'm right on the cusp of going to TH11 myself. So let's go ahead and go down here to uh, where the meta is actually headed. And uh, I have to give a shout out to the No Dip League and I hope CWL doesn't, doesn't get bad that I'm putting both of these uh, leagues in the same video. But basically, um, No Dip League has helped push TH11 and TH10 to um, you know greater heights this, the, this summer. Particularly with the, up, uh, the update happening, the TH10s have been, you know, tasked with, yeah, let's see, can we really get these 10v10 triples going? And they're happening. Can we get more of these 11v11 triples going? And they are, they're, you know, they're, they're hard, but they're happening, guys. So, um, you know, I anticipate that the 11v11 and 10v10 hit rate and opportunities for 11v11 and 10v10 will be expanded uh, coming sort of, you know, the mid to end of season three in um, CWL. So I'm excited to see that happen. I think that the, com the competitive community needs that sort of, you know, instead of always relying on, you know, what your 10s can do to the 11s and what your 11s can do to, do to the 10s, giving your team the opportunity to, you know, have these 11 v 11 attempts and more certain 10 v 10 attempts. I think this is gonna be really healthy for, for war. Now, finally, there's a couple more predictions that, that, that I have, and that would be for Town Hall 9, Goodness gracious, there has to be a, a, a witch nerf coming. I mean, prior to the buff that we have now, prior to the, the, the condition of the witch that we have now, witches were not played. And for it to go from completely unviable, not used, not utilized whatsoever, the war community just spitting on the on the on the troop to basically like being in love with the troop, this is an issue, right? It's complete it's it really bothers me when, when I cover wars and I see nothing but witch hits. And, um, you know, I'm not mad at, at, at the players for using witches. I can't be, you know, that's, it's what's three starring effectively. That's what they got to use. But I am angry that Supercell sort of, you know, made this condition, right? They, they made this possible. They put the witch in, in this, in this position to put the position to just dominate the field. So I definitely think that that will be nerfed. Um, I hope it's nerfed at, at least. I also think that the balloon AI needs to be adjusted again. Something happened to the balloons to where people are just not using balloons like they used to. Lalo is, you know, it's not like it's ineffective anymore. It's not like Lalo is bad. It's just that other things tend to be, are, are being seen a lot more. Other things are being played more. Other things are being three started with more. So I think that the balloon AI could be readjusted to what it was prior to the sort of silent nerf that it received this summer. And I'm excited to see what could happen with that. Now, the last thing that I want to talk about is kind of unrelated to uh, CWL, but it could have some kind of potential impact, and that is the impact of the Builder Hall gear ups on the main village wars. Uh, right now, we have a cannon and we have an archer tower, and reducing the range of those defenses, uh, you know, by giving it that uh, that burst setting for the cannon, also the fast setting for the archer tower, reducing the range on those defenses. I'm not so sure if that is gonna make it really that much greater or more OP. And um, that's just because right now we have bowlers being so dominant. If bowlers are able to bounce out these defenses before they can even target your kill squad, I just feel like the gear up option is maybe even less valuable than having just a standard cannon or standard archer tower that's in the upright position. So we'll see guys, we'll see. I'm not so sure. Um, if these gear ups are really going to be, you know, positive for war or have no effect at all, if people are going to ignore the gear up option and just go with the standard option, we'll see. One defense that I can see potentially being very effective in the main village would be a geared up mortar. So essentially bringing the multi mortar over, which we know is going to happen, but hasn't happened yet. I think that could actually have some kind of, you know, some kind of um, change on how base design is done for Town Hall 10 through, or Town Hall 9 through 11. So I do think that the multi-mortar could potentially, you know, creep into some kind of major base design shift. But anyways, guys, um, I'm gonna go ahead and put up my Discord server once again. So those of you who missed it at, at the beginning, this is my Discord server. I hope that you enjoy it, and I hope that you enjoyed this video. Hope that the things that I said you found valuable. And um, uh, good luck to all the clans uh, finishing out their NDL season. I know NDL actually has quite a bit more to go, but CWL is about to start up in just this week or, or, or next. 
and I'm excited for those clans pushing forward in the competitive community. Take care, see you later.